Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Bezos to fly first man test of his own space vehicle. Also, pilot buzzes concert venue, drops items, and MQ-25 becomes first UAV to refuel another aircraft. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news, stories you don't want to miss. Jeff Bezos' Instagram post says it all. Ever since I was five years old, I've dreamed of traveling to space. On July 20th, I will take that journey with my brother. The greatest adventure with my best friend. Hashtag Gratitum Ferocitor. Blue Origin has confirmed that Jeff Bezos and his brother Mark will join the auction winner on New Shepard's first human flight on July 20th. Auction bidding is underway now and concludes with a live online auction on June 12th. The winning bidder will fly to space on New Shepard's first human flight on July 20th. The winning bid amount will be donated to Blue Origins Foundation, Club of the Future, whose mission is to inspire future generations to pursue careers in STEM and to help invent the future of life in space. Named after Mercury astronaut Alan Shepard, the first American to go to space, New Shepard is Blue Origin's reusable suborbital rocket system designed to take astronauts and research payloads into space. Blue Origin has been flight testing New Shepard and its redundant safety system since 2012. The program has had 15 successful consecutive missions, including three successful escape tests, showing the crew escape system can activate safely in any phase of flight. More news after the break. Hello, pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at AviationSafetyResources.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. EAA is hosting Gigi Coleman, great niece of legendary aviator Bessie Coleman, at the EAA Aviation Museum on June 15th to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Bessie earning her pilot's license on June 15th, 1921. Gigi Coleman will speak about the life of Bessie Coleman, such as her first inspiration to become a pilot, moving to France, getting her license, and finally becoming an air show pilot. There will be two presentations held at the museum's Founders Wing at 10.30 in the morning and at 1.30 p.m. A rescue helicopter has flown a sustainable aviation fuel for the first time, achieving a new milestone in international aviation. Operated by the German nonprofit organization ADAC Luffertung, the Airbus H145 rescue helicopter has had its Aerial 2E engine ceremonially refueled with biofuel, a type of SAF, at the Air Rescue Station Munich's Harlichen Clinic in the presence of ADAC Foundation's board directors. The Feds are redoubling their efforts to offer guidance, resources, and expertise to preempt any airfield errors by general aviation pilots, especially those who have spent a year away from the cockpit. On June 16th, the FAA is hosting a runway safety town hall for all general aviation pilots. The runway safety hall for general aviation pilots will run from 1500 hours to 1630 Eastern Daylight Time on Wednesday, June 16th. The event is free. 
Genesis Aerosystems has received TSO approval for a new update to the s 3100 that brings additional features and enhancements to their digital autopilot. The new version 1.4 update comprises both software and hardware changes to the s 3100. The new hardware features a white backlit display perfect for bright sunlit panels or steep viewing angles. The updated bezel accompanies the change in display and features an optional VNAV button or menu button. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's return to the rest of the news. A pilot is under hot water after buzzing over a concert venue and dropping items. The most recent case in point of pilots behaving badly, according to Bay County Sheriff's Office, they're looking for a pilot of a small plane that flew approximately 300 feet over crowds at the Gulf Coast Jam three times this past Saturday evening, alarming attendees, security personnel, and organizers of the event. Out of caution, the concert was stopped and the stage cleared. The pilot has been identified as Robert Ryan Gore, age 40. Gore not only flew recklessly low over the event and dropped promotional items on top of 32,000 people in the crowd. A warrant for reckless operation of an aircraft, a felony, has been issued for the arrest of Gore, an Okaloosa County resident. BCSO investigators believe when Gore flew away from the event at Frank Brown Park on Panama City Beach. He landed his aircraft in Okaloosa County. After the break, our last top story of the show. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. At Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. Affordable and economical, Pipistrol is proud to present the Alpha Trainer. Offering excellent fuel efficiency and a durable composite design, the Alpha Trainer can be operated from virtually anywhere. Whether you're a first-time aircraft owner, assembling a fleet, or running a flight school, the Light Sport Alpha Trainer from Pipistrol is a dynamic option. Learn more about what the Pipistrol Alpha Trainer can do for you at pipistrol-usa.com. Welcome back. This is our last top story of the show. For the first time in history, the Navy and Boeing have demonstrated air-to-air -air refueling using an unmanned aircraft, the Boeing-owned MQ-25T1 test asset, to refuel another aircraft. During a test flight on June 4th, MQ-25T1 successfully extended the hose and rogue from its Navy-issued aerial refueling store and safely transferred jet fuel to a U.S. Navy F-A-18 Super Hornet demonstrating the MQ-25 Stingray's ability to carry out its primary aerial refueling mission. During the initial part of the flight, the F-A-18 test pilot flew in close formation behind MQ-25 to ensure performance and stability prior to refueling, a maneuver that required as little as 20 feet of separation. Both aircraft were flying at operationally relevant speeds and altitudes with the evaluation safely completed. The MQ-25 drogue was extended and the F-A-18 moved into a plug with the unmanned aircraft and received the scheduled fuel offload. The milestone comes after 25 T-1 flights, testing both aircraft and ASR aerodynamics across the flight envelope, as well as extensive simulations of aerial refueling using MQ-25 digital models. The MQ-25 T-1 will continue flight testing prior to being shipped to Norfolk, Virginia for deck handling trials aboard the U.S. Navy carrier later this year. Well, that does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.